Let's take a look at the solution to question one from the final exam for our course Math 1220. So the function y equals 5 minus c times e to the negative x is the general solution for which of the following differential equations? In which case then six options are given to us. So what strategy could we take to try to determine if we have a solution for a differential equation or not? Well, you have six differential equations, which we see right here. I notice that they're all first order differential equation. They're all separable and most of them are linear differential equations. We could just solve each and every one of them, all six of them until we find this one. That's not the suggestion I would make, but that is a, that is a feasible strategy. Instead, the idea is much like if you had an algebraic equation like 2x plus 1 equals 5, is x equals 3 a solution to something like that, right? You could check it in, you could plug it in there, and you get 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. That doesn't quite work. Uh, we could try x equals 2. You know, we could, we, we, we could plug those in there, and that's what we can do with a differential equation as well. And so notice that if I was just going to plug it into the first one, right, let's compute the derivative of y with respect to x. To give myself a little bit more space, I'm gonna do it over here. So if we calculate the derivative y prime, this is gonna equal five minus c e to the negative x prime. Derivative of a constant is zero. And then by the chain rule, uh, the derivative y prime is gonna equal a negative negative c e to the negative x. Uh, and that is y prime equals positive c e to the negative x. So this is something to keep track of. This is the left-hand side. This is the left-hand side of this first equation right here. On the other hand, if I were to try to compute negative y plus five, you're plugging y in here, you're gonna end up with negative times five minus c e to negative x plus five. Uh, combining like terms, the two fives combine together to actually give me a 10, negative 10 plus c e to the negative x. And so this will be the right-hand side of that differential equation. Do those match up with each other? The answer, of course, is no, right? We have c e to the negative x. We have a c e to the negative x. We actually have, an, uh, we have this negative 10 that's there. We don't want that. And so try to, and so when we try the first one, we see it didn't match up, right? And so at the very least, we're like, hey, the answer is not a. And we could go through the other ones, but we can also be a little bit more strategic with, with this, right? Notice that every option involves a y prime on the left, y prime, y prime, y prime. So we don't have to compute y prime again. We've already done that. And now look at what's going on here. Since y prime is c e to the negative x, um, what are some options we got here? When we looked at this one, y plus 5, you're gonna get that the five from y plus this y actually can combine to give us a 10. So you can't have a y plus five, you need that the five actually disappears. And so that also tells us that option F couldn't work either. Y plus five would give us a 10. Um, so we're gonna to have to have some type of subtraction, right? But then the other thing to pay attention to is that we need to have a positive C, e to the negative x. Um, y starts off with a negative, so we have to somehow turn that negative into a positive. That is, we have to be subtracting a y of some kind. So we have to subtract from five the y. And so we see that option D wouldn't work and option E wouldn't work because we need to subtract the y from the five. And so then we get that limbs it down just to choice B and C. Notice how quickly we're able to go through that. Um, if we tried B, you take five minus five minus C E to the negative X. Bob's your uncle, you're gonna get five minus five, they cancel, and you're gonna get negative negative C, so you get C e to the negative x. And so we see that the correct choice would be B right here. Um, one could also try C. Uh, if you did C in that situation, just, just not that we need to do it, but just so you're aware, if we were trying C, you'd end up with one over C e to the negative x, which could simplify to be C e to the x, but then the exponent isn't right, we need a negative x right there. So, you know, C didn't work as well, and B gives you the correct answer. Once you find the correct so one, only one of them's gonna work, you can stop right there um, and go forward from that. And so that's how one uh, is expected to answer a question like number one. Just plug the equation, plug your solution, your potential solution into the differential equations and see which one happens, plug them all in, and only one of them's gonna work. This one doesn't actually, I mean, again, you could try solving each differential equation separately. That'd be very, very cost expensive. And that's also assuming you'll be given a differential equation you can solve. 
So this one just wants to test whether you know to how to check whether we have a solution to a differential equation or not.